Greetings, thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Saturday, January 8, 2022. Brought to you by Wilcon Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24-7 with Wilcon Online Store. Just go to shop.wilcon.com.ph. For today's editorial, lifting of mining ban, a poor decision. The recent end to the four-year ban on open pit mining in the Philippines is a tremendous disappointment. In spite of hollow promises that adequate safeguards and strict regulation will prevent harm, the decision elevates the risk of large-scale environmental and social damage almost to the point of inevitability and completely fails to read the room when it comes to public opinion on the issue of mining. Much has evidently changed in the past five years because President Duterte, who once openly expressed a strong distaste for the destructive nature of mining and whose first choice to head the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DENR, was an actual environmental advocate in the person of the late Gina Lopez, has remained silent on the removal of the last significant vestige of Lopez's brief time in office. Those with a vested interest in seeing the exploitative industry revive in the Philippines, however, have certainly not been silent. In a statement earlier this week, the Joint Foreign Chambers of the Philippines said the government's decision to end the ban on open pit mining has been a long time coming and would encourage investment in the country. According to the ENR projections, the resumption of open pit mining will lead to the immediate development of 11 pending projects that are expected to generate about 11 billion pesos combined in yearly government revenue, increase annual reports by 36 billion pesos, and provide employment to 22,880 people living in remote municipalities. That is all well and good, but we believe the costs to achieve those gains are unacceptable and cannot be made acceptable because of the very nature of mining. Mineral resources, whether metallic ores, coal, petroleum, or others, are finite. Once removed, they cannot be replaced. To harvest those resources, substantial damage to the environment must be done even if the damage is carefully managed and remediated when mining activities cease, the local environment is unavoidably forever altered. The rosy estimates of how much revenue can be generated or how many people can be employed are simply distractions from the fact that given the current state of the Philippines' industrial development, any mining that takes place here amounts to exploitation of the most fundamental form of the national wealth for the sake of creating value elsewhere. The Philippines has no downstream processing, refining, and manufacturing industrial sector to speak of, which could turn to relatively low-value raw materials into high-value products. Our own nickel and copper are sent away to other countries and sold back to us in the form of imported products costing hundreds of times that we originally earned. There is no form of economics or even elementary mathematics in which that arrangement makes any sense, yet here we are. Even then, it would perhaps be workable if the exported raw materials were something sustainable, such as agricultural products that can be produced again and again, but that is not the case with minerals. Once they are gone, so are the revenues and the exports and the jobs that advocates of mining are now so cheerfully promising. And that is the best case scenario, taking the DANR and mining industry backers at their word that adequate safeguards and strict regulation will indeed be rigorously maintained to prevent a costly ecological disaster. With the decision already on apparent fit accompli, however, the country seems to have no choice but to make the best of it. Thus, the DENR and the mining industry interests must be held strictly accountable for the impacts and outcomes of mining activities. 
any investment in mining must be matched by an equal investment in sustainable development for communities affected, infrastructures and economic opportunities that will remain in place and grow long after the mining is gone. Likewise, all environmental damage must be remediated and not simply in terms of immediate cleanup, but over the long term to return mining areas to their original state. Most importantly, consultation and engagement with affected communities must be forthright and transparent and the decisions of the communities scrupulously respected. The mining industry must never forget that its access to the nation's wealth is a matter of privilege, not right, and must be compelled to conduct itself accordingly. And that's the editorial for Saturday, January 8, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram and listen to the Voice of the Times.